Uh, and also, I would like to thank to Güneş and Mihriban for inviting me to, to, to this beautiful series. Tonight, uh, uh, I'll try to explain how household membership at Uja Köyük was changed over time from 7th millennium BC to the early 6th millennium BC. I hesitate to apply the term uh, household in my title uh, since the earliest levels of uh, the Ulucak uh, excavated, has yet been excavated in a, a smaller area. Uh, however, gradual di differentiation in household organization can still be suggested by the by combining multiple lines of evidence, such as subsistence, domestic and communal buildings, building continuity, storage technology and capacity, uh, supra household corporations, craft specialization, clay images, and personal ornaments. Uh, Ulucak Kuyuk lies 25 kilometers east of uh, Izmir, uh, on the highway from Izmir to Ankara, uh, the mound is uh, the distance of the mound from the sea is about 16 kilometers. The mound is located uh, in the Kemal Pasha Plain, west end of the Kemal Pasha Plain, and the plain is watered by uh, Nifchayu, which is a tributary of the Gedis River, and the plain is surrounded by Sipil Mountain and Nif Mountains. Uh, the total height of the uh, cultural deposits is about 11 meters and 7.5 meters of it uh, represents the uh, Neolithic occupation. Um, and because of the uh, alluvial, uh, because of the alluvial field, uh, five of the 11 meters of cultural deposits of the mound are under the present level of uh, present level of the plain. So, uh, excavations at Ulujak uh, since 1995 uh, revealed, a, revealed seven distinct levels extending from the initial Neolithic uh, through the late, uh, late Roman early Byzantine periods. Neolithic occupation is assigned to the uh, level six through four corresponding to the initial early and late Neolithic. As regards to uh, periodization criteria, uh, the early horizon, I mean level six, is different from the following periods by the absence of pottery and other clay objects. Uh, the distinction made, uh, uh, the distinction between six at level six and four has been made based on the change uh, building continuities. Uh, however, as will be discussed in my presentation, it is the last quarter of the 7th millennium BC when the social relations of, uh, in Ulujak community started to have uh, change. Uh, as in terms of subsistence, subsistence patterns, archeological and botanical studies show that both farming and herding were well developed in Ulujak starting from the 7th millennium BC. Uh, the fourth year herding system, including sheep, goats, cattle, and pig has been attested through the Neolithic periods, Neolithic levels. The role of the uh, animals, uh, however, such as, uh, such as fellow, uh, fellow and red deer, wild boar, in the, in the diet increase only after 6,000 BC. The killing pattern on the right side of the domestic animals suggest that dairy products may have been an integral part of subsistence only after the late 7th millennium BC. However, exploitation of ovicoptics for wool can also be suggested by the spindle holes, not only because of their quantity, it's about 300, but also because of the increase in diameter and weight, uh, weight over time. Uh, among the serious and pulse Pulses found through the Neolithic period in Luja are iron corn, emmer, fruit threshing with land to land peel. However, the main change that occurred in subsistent patterns is the considerable decrease of the cultivation of emmer wheat, while the inclusion of elanthus in the diet increased, to, uh, increased during the level four after 6,000. 
I'm convinced gained much importance taking the place of the primary, the primary crop. The selection of both lentil and einkorn as primary food resources by the Ulujok community suggests that plants with a lower, a lower environmental risk factor uh, as einkorn and wild legume, white legume species are naturally grown in Kemal Pasha Plain were preferred over, the, uh, over others. Uh, the diet is also uh, supplemented by marine uh, resources, uh, and the quantity or variety of marine resources increased over time. Besides a few fish bones, ma uh, marine shells were increasingly exploited uh, both for diet and personal ornaments. Mm -hmm. As you can see on the slide, uh, only the latest building phases has been exposed in a wider area, uh, while earlier levels have so far have been so far uh, been in a, a relatively smaller area. A total of uh, forty a total of forty buildings were so far partly or uh, completely uncovered at Ulujak Uh, uh when we look at the uh, initial phase, uh, level six, uh, dating to early, six, early seventh millennium BC, um, mm, this level is represented by two buildings flanked by open, uh, open spaces with fire and installations. Buildings uh, 42 and 43 are rectangular structures with mud slab walls and located in the adjacent, to, adjacent to each other. Building 42 was rebuilt three times. Uh, and its earliest space must have been contemporary with building 43. Both have red painted lime plastered floors and cobble paint hearts in the corner. Fragments of, uh, fragments of wall debris indicate that the walls of building 42 were also lime plastered and painted. Although the motifs on wall plasters are hard to preserve, they were placed in a panel created by red and cream pigments. Almost no, no finds were recorded um, from building 42 and, and 43. It seems that they were deliberately left clean and ritual plus, as we'll discuss later. More than uh, 15, more than 15, uh, circled and cobble paved parts and ovens were uh, uncovered in the open area around buildings. The use of these fire installations over a long period of time is suggested by the renewal at least three times. Besides botanical remains, a certain amount of burned and unburned animal bones was found to be scattered around the fire installations in low density and seems to be remnants of food rem remains after the area was cleaned, rather than the discard of the entire of an of the entire meal. Two neonatal burials uh, buried near the hearts represents the only human burials throughout the Neolithic occupations in Uluja. One of these burials was marked by a saddle fern that was laid on top of the skeleton. Briefly, two buildings from the earliest level possibly. Uh, represents the communal buildings and such a dense concentrations of fire installations with scattered animal bones in open areas around these buildings has yet to be unknown from the following periods, periods in Uluja. Accordingly, food sharing may have been one of the communal activities that took place in and around these buildings. Uh, following period level five uh, is characterized by a single room rectangular houses with walls constructed either of bottle and duck or mud slab walls, uh, mud slabs without stone, stone foundations. They are either freestanding or adjacent to each other with common walls. The size is about 20 square meters. Each have its own uh, oven hard or storage installations. However, both technology and capacity of storage facilities were changed over time. Level four 
Substantial, uh, substantial houses built of sun-dried mud brick walls on stone foundations characterized the main change in level four after 6,000 BC. Houses were arranged, uh, arrange, were arranged along the narrow streets in between. The size of the domestic buildings in this phase clearly increased about 40 square, 40, 45 square meter, while internal subdivisions uh, and enclosed courtyards um, became an integral part of some houses. Courtyards enclosed by pizza walls seems to indicate, indicate the desire for privacy in the early 6th millennium BC household. A fixed grinding installations near the near ovens and fixed location for ovens opposite buildings entrances suggest the special organization of cooking and, cooking and food processing facilities became more standard. Some of the buildings such as uh, rooms for three for for four four and three and buildings 13. Uh, some of the buildings with an oven and heart in each room, see here, uh, may have been occupied by extended households. And as I have already mentioned, the technology of storage facilities have been changed over time. The plastered shallow storage pits in the early level five are replaced by clay sloths and boxes in the late five period. In the beginning of 6th millennium BC, however, uh, 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 in, uh, large so uh, storage jars with a capacity of 50 liters were emerged while clay sloths and boxes disappeared. When one compares uh, the capacity of storage activities in earlier and later building phases, phases of level five, one can see the capacity of storage pits in earlier phases are quite low, as you can see 49 kilograms or 31 kilograms, and in the later phases, more than 500 uh, kilograms. Um, such, a low such a low quantity of grain storage would support a family with three or four persons just for two or three weeks. The more efficient storage technology, as well as increase in storage capacity during the late 7th millennium BC at Ulujak, therefore led me to suggest that uh, households start to have been economically independent in, the, in this period, while earlier households at the site may have spent communal efforts for both for crop production and storage facilities. No strict building continuity has been attested at Ulujakoy. Only a few buildings were rebuilt more or less rebuilt in the same or more or less in the same area. However, these build these long leave houses still reflect clear fluidity and flexibility in rebuilding processes. Three adjacent buildings uh, here on the left side uh, with common walls in one horizon was replaced. Uh, by a uh, uh, by a freestanding uh, by a by sorry uh, three adjacent houses with common walls in one horizon was replaced by a freestanding one in the following horizon or vice versa. Most of the buildings, most of the Neolithic buildings at Ulujak uh, were ended by fire. Because of this, Ulujak is also included the sites warehouse burning was characterized by some scholars. However, we have very rare evidence for deliberate house burning practices and also for ritual closed buildings. All such practices have yet been found in the earlier phases, level six and early five. Uh, 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 for example, in, uh, as, as it does the building closing uh, rituals uh, or phenomenon, uh, level five in level five fifty uh, building fifty eight, nothing was found from uh, building fifty eight except seven astragalus uh, belonging to uh, cattle. Uh, as building uh, fifty four was rebuilt on uh, building fifty eight, 
it's not clear whether these bonds represent the ritual act related to abandonment of building 58 or foundation motive, motives for building 54. Building 54 appears to have been deliberately burned and then the whole debris belonging to the walls and roof were removed. After the floor was partly destroyed, yeah. um, a circular, uh, on the left side, uh, right side, a circular um, stone installation with, with a grinding stone was built. Besides, besides uh, a group of animal bones uh, placed in a shallow pit dug into the building's wall, a few a package including a couple of cattle and overcoats, ceramic shirts, grinding stones, personal ornament, and pots were carefully arranged around one of the central post hall. Moreover, uh, the post hall revealed a frog, uh, a frog bones. Without going into details, as I, as I have already mentioned, building 42 and 43 from the earlier occupation, Level were left clean and buildings were ritual closed, as suggested by a scapula and and, and the mandible of Ocapris, uh, a bone implement and the grinding stones from the floors. As regards of super, super household corporations, besides crop production, lime burning may have been one of these activities, as suggested by eight superimposed layers consisting of hearts and or irregular tick of uh, irregularly irregular thick surfaces of lime dated possibly early level five. We have just uh, excavated this area uh, last year. Therefore, we have no exact carbon 14 days, but definitely they are earlier than uh, late seventh millennium BC. Mm, a great number of spindle holes and loom base as well as a, uh, as well as bone needles and comb-like comb -like bone items and a piece of textile preserved on clay idol indicate that textile production is one of the import important activities carried out at Ulujagir. The dense concentration of spindle holes and loom weights in some houses, particularly during the uh, later phases, show that some households may have been specialized in textile uh, production. The more concrete evidence uh, for craft specialization, however, came from a six-room pottery workshop dating to the beginning of the sixth millennium BC. The whole sequence of pottery production, including clay loaves, unfinished coil vessels, molds, prunet like coarse plates, red hematite lumps, and burnishing stones were attested in this building complex. Except animal figurines, clay images, including stamps, anthropomorphic figurines, and spoons emerged during the last quarter of the seventh millennium BC. The representations of uh, various species of animals increased only after 6,000 BC. While singularly shaped clay horns are more common through the second half of the seventh millennium BC. Stamps, clay stamps from Lujak may have been used for textile production as some of them were found in close relation with spindle holes and loom weights. Anthropomorphic figurines displayed a great variety from abbreviated forms through the natural shaped ones. And most of them were found in domestic context, although some uh, came from midden areas. The variety in head, in head and face details, such as hairstyle and eyes that gave the figurine some identity became so obvious in the early 6th millennium BC. I agree with the idea that representations of Neolithic figurines with gen uh, genital organs and or, and or breasts do not suggest gender binary. However, the increasing emphasis uh, on hollow bodies in the form of anthropomorphic vessels, figurines, and anthropomorphic spoons 
in the early 6th millennium BC, led us to think that the, distinctive, the distinctiveness of female body as a container became a norm at Ulyakuyuk and elsewhere. This metaphorical link seems to me was re reiterated by various, major, by various images in this period. Similar to the clay symbolic media, personal ornaments have, uh, have also been diversified through time in terms of forms as well as raw materials, including marine shells, galena, animal bones, clay, and various stones such as marble, serpentinite, hookahs, and slate. Overall pictures suggest that household autonomy increased from the late 7th millennium BC to the early 6th millennium BC at Uluja. Food sharing and household cooperation for crop production, lime burning, and possibly for storage activities, may be indicative for more commonly, commonly oriented households in the earlier phases. Increase in storage capacity, house size, and privacy in the later phases, however, suggests economically independent nuclear or possibly extended, possibly some extended households. The latter process also overlaps with the exploitation of animals for secondary products, craft specialization, and portative symbolic media, including stamps, figurines, and spoons. Moreover, the shift in ritual activities from lower to upper levels can also be suggested. The transition was from the infrequent but high erosive rituals, such as newborn burials, house burning, and building closing with special packages to more frequent and everyday rituals. Lastly, Distinctive identity markers such as beads or dress with various designs decorated by clay stamps may have been may have mediated the emerging social differentiation within the community, either in the household level or a sense of individual self. Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you very much indeed. Um, I, do you want to stop uh, screen sharing? I don't know if we have to do that. But um, that, that, that was hugely informative. Um, I was struggling to keep up with my note taking. Um, so we can now open the floor to questions. But uh, while people are, are, are thinking about their, their questions, if I could maybe ask one, one, one quick one, which is in, in the, uh, the shift from the early to late. The, the early period has... Um, low capacity in storage, um, but uh, do you think that early early storage is communal storage or, or it's household storage, but just small scale? It was just, a, uh, we don't know the house, houses from the earliest level. We have only possibly communal buildings uh -huh. uh, as they are uh, sophisticatedly elaborated. I mean, the line plaster, um, and decoration on walls, uh, etc. Uh, but I think it was a domestic building the, um, from the pits from uh, from the domestic unit. Right. So 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 the, st the storage is, is communal, but uh, it's it's inside the buildings. Yeah, and, and low capacity. It's not a building, but the, this is not this is, this is very low yeah. for for households. So there must have been communal. Uh, yeah. Uh, storage activities, yeah. which we have not discovered yet. I right. Think. Okay, I'm, I'm, with, I'm with you. Yes, thank you very much for that. That, that makes sense. Now, has anybody got themselves organised to ask a question as yet? Um, you can put them in the chat box, or you can raise your hand. Um, I don't think I can see any hands up yet. I mean, I. I I'm sure there's lots to ask. I mean, I, 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 I've got other questions, but I don't want to just have a, a private conversation with you up here. It's a, um, but perhaps. Trevor raises hand, Bill. Ah, oh, Trevor. Uh, uh, um, can I ask you about uh, uh, ceramic production? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not clear. Do you think that ceramic production was uh, specialized and, and only took place 
in certain households or was it communal for the whole village? Mm, it's a bit complex questions. Uh, I specialize in complicated questions. Yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, um, we have not, uh, we have not, I mean, the, mm, in, uh, in, in this sixth room, we have uh, in each room uh, what I explain, what, what I describe as a uh, pottery workshop. From the each room uh, of this pottery workshop, we we only found uh, the evidence for, for uh, pottery production. Nothing else. I mean the limes or loaves or whatever. So whatever we find from domestic units we, that, that we don't we did we did not find uh, in these buildings. So uh, somehow it is specialized pottery, but the problem is that uh, to whom this pottery was produced? Um, uh, since, uh, I mean, it's for uh, the community, it's for the people who, who are living in Bujaköy or for uh, to exchange, uh, or for to exchange with, uh, um, beyond the site, people be uh, inhabited beyond the site. But whether it was, it, it's somehow specialized, but whether the photo uh, production was organized by certain certain households, uh, I mean, it was uh, a cooperative production, or I don't know. But some households, I suppose, some households specialize uh, in making pottery. Mm. But uh, I still, this doesn't mean that uh, households stop uh, producing, stop producing their own pottery. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We we. Uh, we need the more data. We, we we need to excavate more area to understand yeah. what's going on. You're, you're you're being very cautious in your interpretation. But, uh, <laughs> um, Barbara, you've got the hand up. Do you want to? Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Hi, hi, Islam, and congratulations sure. to your uh, to your results. Um, as you know, as your neighboring excavation, um, I'm. I would like to ask you, you have argued from, you know, for a kind of development from a more communal oriented household towards um, more independent nuclear household concepts in mm -hmm. the, uh, at the site of Uluchak. And I wonder, can you find, you know, aside uh, the architecture and the capacity of, uh, for storage and so on, can you see this differentiation of these households and this independency from each other also in other aspects of the material culture? For example, do you have differences in the, let me say, in the, uh, in the pottery assemblages or in the bone tools or in the, you know, in some economical aspects like, like, um, like lithic raw materials or something that, is, that could uh, support your ar argument also from a material perspective? Thank you, Islam. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, um, the clay images, uh, for example, um, uh, besides uh, low capacity of storage facilities, uh, uh, we have different. We have evidence for different types of uh, ritual practices, as I have explained. Uh, I mean, like house burning and uh, manipulations, uh, special deposit, deposits, especially with uh, 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 remains of animal parts, specific parts of animals, scapula and uh, mandible and such things, which we do not see these practices, this practice in the upper levels. When uh, these practices, uh, has been ended, then the clay images, uh, I mean, the figurines, clay stems, uh, I mean, the portable uh, images, uh, 
uh, has been uh, uh, portable images uh, emerge in the later phases. So the, the, the ritual act moved from um, moved from maybe communal buildings or repetitive communal buildings to, to the uh, portable objects, which is which it, which may have been manipulated or which have been which which may have been manipulated in domestic quarters. Um, in terms of uh, in terms of lithics, uh, I mean the symbolic me media or ritual act uh, were changed through time. This is one evidence. The other one is storage capacity, and uh, in terms of lithing, and also economical. Uh, we have also witnessed some economical change, such as uh, such as uh, exploitation of our coppers for secondary products. So we have changed. We have uh, we see a certain degree of uh, change in economic aspects in economy as well. But in lithics, uh, Nurjan Kayajan has been, uh, Nurjan Kayajan studied the earliest material uh, and latest material from Ujak. There are certain changes uh, between this latest and earliest level, um, but also, but uh, she hasn't studied yet the uh, in between. So I don't know what is the uh, if there is technological and uh, other change in lithic techno lithic technology. Great, thank you very much. Um, Offa's hand went. Offa Mada's hand went up, but it's gone back down again. I think so. Ma Mary, should we go to you? Well, awesome. Thank you very much for a very interesting talk. And it's so so nice to see a kind of an insider view of the details and the chronology. And uh, you've made a very compelling uh, case for uh, a really a, 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 a strong organizational change in the storage, especially the capacity for storage. And I might've missed something, but if am I understanding correctly that when you talk about storage capacity, you're talking about inside the domestic structures or for the community as a whole? Uh, inside the domestic structures. Okay, so, so my next question is, do you think that um, when they're, they're practicing in, in a more communal economic structure in the earlier phases, that they're also storing somewhere, like for example, communally large, large amounts of seeds, or do you think that the plant food storage is something that really totally increases um, in the later phases. I mean, you know, it's 40, uh, 35, 40 or 50 kilograms uh, is so low to uh, family for a year. I mean, mm -hmm. family can survive with such a low quantity of uh, grain and survive for two or three weeks so therefore right. that's why i'm thinking that although uh, as i have already uh, co uh, confessed that uh, we have not excavated the, the earliest phases in a larger area but the uh, the evidence indirectly suggests us that uh, communal storage facilities uh, prevailed uh, during the earlier phases. You think they, they exist or they don't exist in the early phases? I think it exists. Okay. And then not only the capacity, but also the storage technology were changed. I mean, from mm -hmm. shallow pits through, uh, through the clay silo and boxes, and then further change to a larger storage jars. I see. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Sorry, I was muted. Ganesh, I think you, you were next. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Azda. Uh, my question is very cliche, maybe, but what do you think about uh, about of the Neolithic package? So 
if, if you mention about the cultural interaction, mm. is the material at Uluja. I, I, like I would like to answer these questions as regards the households. But, uh, but can, I mean, I, I mean, I, but still, uh, it. Still, I have answered. Uh, I mean, if households, uh, if uh, increasingly autonomous houses emerge in Levant as early as middle PPN, around after, I mean, late PPN or middle PPN, and if, uh, uh, if Chataluk or Ashiklu, or then later, uh, Çataluk, uh, uh, excavator of Çataluk suggests that uh, uh, community at Çataluk became uh, increasingly autonomous, starting from the mid seventh millennium BC. And then what we see in the Western Anatolia that the, this process has been started, according to my reading, started a few centuries that a few centuries later than the central Anatolia. So therefore, if people, this is a lifestyle, if people already figure out uh, how to live uh, independently uh, from rest of the community, so why they discover the America again? I don't know if I, if my answer Satisfy yes. you. So I, I don't think but that. My second part of the question. Uh, I mean, are there any uh, concentration concentration change? I mean, if any any, if there are any more interaction from east or west, any other place. But are there any breaking point? Any change? Mm. Uh, for example, the absence of pottery in the early space is another indication. And uh, the uh, lithic technology in our early, uh, from our early space based on pressure technique. And uh, according to lithic uh, expert, uh, the technology has no similarities with neither in the West nor in the uh, East, so uh, I don't know what, uh, I do not think that the situation in Aegean uh, uh, is not the same what we see in Marmara region. There is something different going on in the Aegean, I suppose. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, just before we go to the next hand, we had a question from Jeffrey Summers, uh, um, who wanted to know what textiles were being spun, if you know what, mat the, what the material was. Sorry, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't, uh, I don't know, we haven't, uh, the, the one preserved on idol figurine, he asked. I, I think he's just meaning in general, but uh, I, I guess that's the only one that you can... Uh, I, don't know the, uh, uh, I don't know that one, but when we analyze the uh, analyze the spindle walls, uh, the, the the diameter, both their diameter and weight um, were changed through times. So that's why I suggested that even though may, maybe in the earlier phases uh, plants uh, plants uh, were used for textile, but uh, since there is a change in their weight and uh, diameter, because of their change in weight and diameter, wool uh, will also uh, will also may have been used in later phases. Okay, thanks. That should should give the answer. I think uh, Muga, um, you've been patiently sitting there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your presentation, Azan. And um, I have a settlement based question. I, uh, I'm interested in the external area that you mentioned. Um, maybe I missed for the middle and um, later cases, but uh, in the initial Neolithic, I think there are some um, parts and fire installations. So I was wondering. Uh, what we can uh, see in terms of change in the use of external spaces 
um, in food processing or fire management or more communal activities maybe. But um, do we know about those? Hmm. Uh, there is no such, uh, whatever we see, I mean, the dense concentration of parts and installations uh, have so far have so far discovered in the early earliest phase. Mm. So we do not have evidence for uh, such uh, large such large such, such large open areas with fire installations. And the fire installations uh, moved into the uh, houses. Mm. Mm, but still, I would like to be cautious. Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure that. In the sixth millennium BC, um, they are definitely inside of the buildings, and uh, the outer, the, the um, open areas are not common. But I don't know. Uh, I don't know what's going on uh, earlier than six thousand BC. I mean, maybe we can find some other open areas with fires with higher installations, so I don't want to, okay. but there is change in time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And we've got another hand up from Arkadis. Uh, hi, Aslan. Thank you very much for this very interesting talk. And I, my question sort of relates to this uh, spatial development in the last 200 years of uh, the seventh millennium. And then you said as this, you might have had these houses being built one on top of another mm -hmm. uh, in this in this phase, and uh, you, I think you you said it like three houses uh, during that phase. But my question is of uh, how do how do you think this these houses might have been used at the same time or occupied at the same time, or maybe you you have, we are having a kind of a shift in occupation of this area. So one let's say household is built let's say in western part of the area and then abandoned and the, the other one sometime later in the east or, or something like that. Do you see any pattern or do you want to say that, you know, the houses were built like a block one after another? What was this like a social development in that period? I any have questions? some ideas. Uh, and in one case, for example, three buildings uh, became one building in one cases. Uh, the one uh, which have, uh, the one that I, uh, that I explained, it was deliberately burned in the end. Okay. And have special deposits. Then the area uh, for, for, for one horizon, the area was not uh, occupied for a while. Okay. I mean, at least one horizon. And then uh, building came out. I mean, um, so I have some ideas, but since the cases are one or two, exactly, it's very um, to make such a generalization, I say is not going to be correct mm -hmm, mm -hmm. at the moment. But what I feel is that uh, although uh, uh, the building complexes, uh, I mean the the households with the houses with uh, sharing uh, common walls have uh, uh, can be still larger households. Can uh, uh, but each house has its own parts, oven, and storage facility. Okay. okay. On the other hand, I am thinking that these these kind of uh, building units which shares common walls still can be, can have some affinities or so based on, you know, uh, fictive for real kinship. Sure. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Okay. And do you think that in this sixth millennium, the situation changed? In Definitely this, in changed. Back? It changed, it did, yeah. looks, yeah. It was like a more like a village type of, mm -hmm. of settlement. As you nicely presented, I mean, this uh, the phase, uh, the level four, right? Mm -hmm. Like around. And this change seems to me has been started 
uh, at the beginning of 7th millennium BC. I mean, little earlier than 6,000 BC, but the things became more clear uh, after 6,000 BC. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you again. Uh, Ian, you've got your hand up. Yes. Uh, hello to everybody. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. It's great to see this kind of detailed work, having read your publications over the years, that really helped me understand some of the different pieces to it. So I had two questions for you uh, that are totally unrelated. First one is I'd, I'd love to hear more about what you think is going on in the way of mortuary practices and burials. And then the second one, much to my surprise, as somebody who is trained in lithic technology, I am fascinated by your evidence for ceramic production. And my question there is not just that of, you obviously have all the different pieces and sort of the, 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 the mode of production and what's going on. Uh, the one thing you didn't mention is the actual baking and whether you have any evidence for kilns or anything else that way for the firing of the ceramics. So again, thank you. Great presentation. And I'd love to hear about those two questions. Thank you. Um, uh, there are, uh, there are uh, in, in three rooms, uh, yes, I think two, two rooms. Two rooms in this uh, pottery workshop, workshop complex, in two rooms, we have, uh, we, we, we found ovens and three ovens that we found. And I applied a project indeed. I need the money for that. I need to, I need to get some petrographic results, both mm -hmm. from the clay loaves and pottery and, you know, uh, I'm, we are going, we are planning to apply some um, uh, analyzers to understand the difference between the, the technological, the, uh, the technological difference of pottery production uh, in the uh, pottery workshop and those from, those found from pottery workshop and pottery, uh, uh, those found in uh, domestic units. So, mm -hmm. um, um, whether the degree uh, of firing has been different, I mean, the, the, the building technology, firing technology, and this kind of things ha have some, di uh, some uh, differences in the household level production and specialized production. We need, uh, we need to, uh, we need to, we need to have, we need, we need more uh, uh, analyze. And the first questions about lithic technology. Uh, the first question was just if you could say more about the burial practices uh, the burial. and mortuary practices. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, the the two neonatal burials from the earliest level is the only only intramural burials uh, at Ulujak. So uh, so. Burials are not, intramural burials is not the feature of uh, the site that I can say. So there must have been extern, uh, extramural uh, cemetery area that there must, uh, maybe, but we don't know where it is. And so we are in the Izmir and all around of the site uh, was built by factories so maybe i will never able to discover the external uh, extramural cemetery that's great thanks and presumably yes with, with the amount of uh, sediment that's built up um that you saw in your your tail mm -hmm. sections that's also a problem for survey off-site as well a anna you've got your hand up yeah <clears throat> Thanks for the lecture. I mean, Ian was so eloquent in his uh, praising that I just say kudos. Uh, and he also stole my question about mortuary practices, but I still have a very small question. And he, did I understand you that uh, you actually didn't uh, examine in detail the textiles? Like you can't say whether, let's say, it was 
flags that they were using or any, did you make any progress in identifying the actual fibers? Uh, no, if there's any expert who listens to me that uh, very welcome to our excavation and he or she can study and can tell us what it is. If it's okay by you, I can uh, recommend somebody and let her be in touch with you. The Georgian lady who did actually- I am very open for, such, uh, for this collaboration. Okay. Thanks. Because it was found earlier than, uh, I have started the excava excavations at Ulujak started in 1995, uh, yes. Uh, and uh, I have excavated, I have started the excavations, I delivered the excavations since uh, 2009. So this piece belongs yeah. to earlier excavation, so it was kept in the museum. So if anyone is interested to study on it, it's, uh, he or she is very welcome. Thank you. I will get in touch with you and I'll give you the name of that lady. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, and we've got another question in the chat box uh, asking if you have any sign of interpersonal violence or warfare in Ulujak. Warfare? Yeah, or interpersonal violence or warfare, yeah. Uh, interpersonal warfare. So we yeah. don't have skeleton that I can reply these questions. Uh, the, mm, most of the, as I have, uh, as I have told, most of the buildings were burned, I mean, ended with uh, fire. Uh, that's why uh, most of the finds, most of the, um, uh, uh, most of the finds uh, well preserved in, in situ at Uluja. But as I have uh, explained, there is, uh, I have very few evidence that I can surely uh, claim that this house was burned. Uh, so, except burning, we have no, uh, and I think it's, uh, I, I don't think that it's, you know, it, it can be, you know, Kazani, uh, it can be uh, accident. Uh, 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 I don't think that it's because of warfare, this, this. Firing phenomenon. You, th you thought it might even be a ritual closing of the buildings as well. So, hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, Ian, is your hand still up or is that another? No. Okay. Um, I don't see anybody else with hands up or anything else in the chat. So, this is your last chance. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much indeed. Uh, I think, and, and you could tell from the questions as well that. Uh, Really interesting lecture, uh, and, and I, for one, know, know a lot more about uh, the site and, and the, the, the Neolithic in Western Turkey than I did before. So great, thank you very much again. And I guess- no, Thank you very much, thank you. Thank you.